Hi, I'm Cliff, N4CCB. Have you ever been working portable with somebody else and even though you're on different bands, you keep interfering with each other? Or maybe during field day, if you've got multiple stations set up in the same general area, you keep interfering with each other even though you're working separate bands. Well, the answer to that is to purchase or make a bandpass filter. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about bandpass filters and I'm gonna show you what it is I'm going to tell you uh, how I built one and show you where to get the plans. I'll show you what's inside the one I built. I'll put it on a spectrum analyzer so you can visually you know, see how it works. And finally, I'm going to show you a little video clip of where I was being interfered with and then put the bandpass filter in line and the interference went away. So let's get started. Now, a bandpass filter is simply a filter that goes between your antenna and your radio that attenuates signals outside the band. Now, let's take a 20 meter bandpass filter. It will allow your 20 meter, 20 meter signal to go through to the antenna and out into the world. And it'll allow any 20 meter uh, signals coming through your antenna to pass through the bandpass to your receiver. But if somebody's on 15 meters, an adjacent band, and they transmit, their signal will be greatly attenuated by the bandpass filter. Um, last year at field day, uh, the WCares.org group that I belong to, we had four or five stations running, and even though we were working different bands, whenever somebody would transmit, you would hear some monkey chatter or some clicking, um, and it was really annoying. And I was running the Flex software on that day, and you could see the big pan adapter uh, where you know, the interference was coming from. So after that, I decided I wanted to do something about that. And the first thing I did was I Googled HF bandpass filter. And what I did, one of the very first entries that came up was this article that you see behind me. It's an ARRL article from 1988. I think it was in QST in 1988. And I, when I looked at that, I just thought, that's crazy how few components there are. And there are only three toroids and three capacitors. That's it. I'm going to open this one up and show it to you. This is one I built myself. Okay, I'm going to put this on the screen so you can see it, but this is it. Three toroids, three capacitors. I built this one on perf board and soldered it on the back. I made uh, four little plastic standoffs so that the, uh, the bottom of the components wouldn't be touching the the bottom of the case here. But that's it. A perf board, three toroids, three capacitors, a couple of SO239s. Um, now, there are commercially available ones. This one is made by Array Solutions. It's $105 to $125, depending on which band. But it works exactly the same. Matter of fact, I've had them both on the Spectrum Analyzer. And this one actually is slightly better, the one that I made. Um, so I think the next thing I should do is put this on the analyzer so that you can visualize how this is filtering out signals from adjacent bands. So let's look at that. Okay, I've got the bandpass filter connected to my spectrum analyzer. And what you're seeing here is the bandpass filter in line, but there's no tracking generator turned on yet. So there are no signals being passed through the bandpass filter. So I'm gonna turn on the tracking generator all right, so that's what's happening here. The 20 meter signals are being allowed to pass through and then signals on lower frequencies are falling off. Signals on the higher frequencies are falling off. And let's go back and see where this is set to. All right, the center frequency is set to 14 megahertz. The starting frequency over here is set to 3.5, which is the start of uh, 80 meters. The stop frequency is set to about the 12 meter band, 24.5 megahertz in this case. So you can visualize how the filter is working. Let's put on a marker and start going down here to the other side. You can see this marker right here and you can see the frequency that it's turned to currently and how many dB down we are from zero. So as I come down here to the start of the 40 meter band at seven megahertz, you can see that we're down like 65, 66 dB. Well, there's six dB in an S unit, right? So we're down about 10 S units from the shoulder up here at the top of this 20 meter band. 
So if somebody was interfering with us at like an S9 signal, we've just completely knocked them out on 40 meters by putting in this uh, bandpass filter. And likewise, let's go see where we are on the 15 meter band. As I come up here towards 21 megahertz, you'll see that we're down about 41 dB. A 42 dB would be 7S units. So uh, we're about 7S units uh, down from zero. So that's, that's helped a lot if somebody was on, on 15 meters interfering with us. Now, let's back it up to 17 meters. So that's 18 megahertz, 18.68 is where it starts. 0.68. That's, that's close. So now we're in, the, we're in the 17 meter band and we're only down 12 dB. That's only 2S units. So you can see that this bandpass filter is not sharp enough to really help us much if somebody's transmitting on 17 meters and we're on 20 meters. Uh, but it does a great job if somebody's interfering with us from, from 15 meters or 12 meters or 10 meters. So there you have it. Now there are other different bandpass uh, designs. This is a very simple Butterworth design, but it's very effective uh, as, you can, as you can see. Okay, last thing I wanna show you is a little video that me and my friend Doug Miller made for our test, we're going to interfere with this radio. Now this is an FT817 just sitting here on the table. If you look at the display, you'll see that it's set to 14.236, which is the voice portion of the 20 meter band. And there's a Elecraft T1 tuner here. And here's the bandpass filter. Notice that it's out of the circuit. There's just a barrel connector there between those two pieces of coax. So what we're going to do is we're going to interfere with this radio with this radio, the one that's in my car. Notice it's set to 21045, which is the CW portion of 15 meters. Doug's going to send some CW on that key while I'm listening to the other radio, and you'll hear the interference. Um. Okay, so that's what it sounds like to be interfered with by a nearby station. So now Doug's going to take the barrel connector out and insert the bandpass filter uh, here between the antenna and the radio. Nothing else is changing. We're simply just putting in the bandpass filter. And then Doug's going to go back over to my car and he's going to do exactly what he did a minute ago. He's going to send CW and we're going to listen to the radio to hear it being interfered with. Now I can tell you right now there's nothing to hear so let's listen. I'm not hearing anything. So I look at Doug and say, are you sending anything? And he says, yeah. So there's just no interference whatsoever. We've completely eliminated it with that bandpass filter. I think that's pretty awesome. What do you think about that, Douglas Miller? Well, there you have it. Proof that these things do work. So I hope you'll consider building one of these. It only costs a few dollars to build, only takes a little bit of time, and you'll be very proud of yourself for building this, and it really does help, as you saw in the video. Um, there's always this commercial solution available if you don't want to build something, um, but I would encourage you to experiment and play around with doing this kind of stuff because it really uh, helps your understanding of what's going on behind the scenes, and it's just another facet of the ham hobby that you might get into. You never know. I guess that's it. As always, thanks for watching.